Hello there, and welcome back to our weekly AI news. Today, we'll bring you up to speed on the latest happenings in artificial intelligence that you should be aware of. We kick things off with Time Magazine recently unveiling its list of the top 100 most influential figures in the realm of AI. This comprehensive list is categorized into four distinct groups, leaders, innovators, shapers, and thinkers. According to the article, the ability of AI to equal or exceed human talents is both terrifying and exciting. The ability to act like a human does is the defining characteristic of artificial intelligence. Every advancement in machine learning and large language models can be traced back to people, both the largely unseen human work that makes huge language models safer and the humans who make critical judgments on when and how to use this technology. Hence, the creation of Time 100 slash AI. The leaders are led by Dario and Daniela Amode, the CEO and president of Anthropic, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, Demis Hassabis, CEO and co-founder of Google DeepMind, Robin Lee, CEO, chairman and co-founder of Beidou, Elon Musk, founder of OpenAI, and other leaders of AI. The innovators are led by writers Ted Chang and Charlie Brooker, musician Holly Herndon, Pelinomi Moiloa, CEO and co-founder of Lalapa I, Grimes, a musician, Neil Kosla, CEO and co-founder of Curie, and others. The shapers are led by Alondra Nelson, a researcher at the Institute for Advanced Study and Policy Advisor, Ian Hogarth, the chair of the UK's Frontier AI Task Force, and Audrey Tang, the minister of Taiwan's General Affairs. And lastly, the thinkers, led by Geoffrey Hinton, emeritus professor at the University of Toronto, Fei Fei Li, a professor at Stanford University, Shane Legg, co-founder and chief AGI scientist of Google DeepMind, among others. The second jaw-dropping AI news of the week was published by Time, titled, How the AI Revolution Will Reshape the World. It starts with this strong statement, we are about to see the greatest redistribution of power in history. If the last great tech wave, computers and the internet, was about broadcasting information, this new wave is all about doing. We are facing a step change in what's possible for individual people to do, and at a previously unthinkable pace. AI is growing more powerful and cheaper by the month, making what was computationally impossible or cost tens of millions of dollars a few years ago common. These AIs will organize a retirement party and manage your diary. They will develop and execute business strategies whilst designing new drugs to fight cancer. They will plan and run hospitals or invasions just as much as they will answer your email. Building an airline or instead grounding the entire fleet each becomes more achievable. Whether it's commercial, religious, cultural, or military, democratic, or authoritarian, every possible motivation you can think of can be dramatically enhanced by having cheaper power at your fingertips. These tools will be available to everyone, billionaires and street hustlers, kids in India, and pensioners in Beverly Hills. A proliferation of not just technology, but capability itself. Wow! Those are indeed impactful statements. And it's true that AI has grown increasingly powerful and pervasive. Can we still prevent the singularity? Anyway, let us proceed to the third AI news of the week. This is also an article posted in Time titled, Inside Elon Musk's Struggle for the Future of AI. So it started by talking about a conference back in 2012 when Elon Musk crossed paths with Demis Hassabis. Demis, a video game designer and AI researcher, had co-founded a company called DeepMind. Their mission was to create computers that could learn to think like humans. And then, as the saying goes, the rest becomes part of history. This article delves into Elon Musk's involvement with AI, highlighting his profound concerns about the potential dangers of uncontrolled AI. It mentions his disagreements with Larry Page, who, in 2015, labeled him as an advocate for prioritizing human lives over the potential consciousness of computers. In response, Elon co-founded OpenAI to challenge Google's AI dominance. Walter Isaacson, renowned for his biography on Steve Jobs, is currently working on a book about Elon Musk. It provides insights into Elon's journey with AI, emphasizing his growing determination to ensure the safety of AI systems while simultaneously pushing forward with his goal of sending humans to Mars as a contingency plan. It contains Elon's fears, just as this one with his conversation with Demis Hannibus. He said, Musk explained that his reason for building rockets that could go to Mars 
was that it might be a way to preserve human consciousness in the event of a world war, asteroid strike, or civilization collapse. Machines could become super intelligent and surpass us mere mortals, perhaps even decide to dispose of us. During Musk's birthday party in 2013 at Napa Valley, California, Musk passionately argued that without implementing safeguards, artificial intelligence systems could potentially supplant humans, rendering our species obsolete, or worse, extinct. The fourth news of the week that you must know, however, is why Meta's Yan LeCun isn't buying the AI Doomer narrative. Meta's vice president and chief AI scientist Yan LeCun tweeted a message that cleverly combined a subtle jab at a emerging rival with a friendly push for his own company's leadership. He wrote, By releasing public demos that, as impressive and useful as they may be, have major flaws, established companies have less to gain and more to lose than cash-hungry startups. If Google and Meta haven't released chat GPT-like things, it's not because they can't. It's because they won't. LeCun believes giving more people access to this technology will also help rapidly improve it, something that LeCun says we should all want. He likens it to a car. You can have a car that rides three miles an hour and crashes often, which is what we currently have, he says, describing the latest generation of large language models. Or you can have a car that goes faster, so it's scarier, but it's got brakes and seat belts and airbags and an emergency braking system that detects obstacles, so in many ways, it's safer. So, is it possible that this might trigger a response from Elon or another AI enthusiast in the future? Anyway, the fifth news is from Amazon and how generative AI helped train Amazon One to recognize your palm. It says, no wallet, no phone, no problem. A neural network learned from images of millions of artificial hands to achieve accuracy higher than scanning two irises. They call it Amazon One and users can use the palm of their hand for everyday activities like paying at a store, presenting a loyalty card, verifying their age, or entering a venue. Currently, Amazon One is being rolled out to more than 500 Whole Foods market stores and dozens of third-party locations. Moving forward to the sixth AI news of the week is, Apple is reportedly spending millions of dollars a day training AI, and the company believes that they Ajax is a more powerful language model than ChatGPT. Well, let's view this as a response to allegations that Apple has been relatively quiet when it comes to planned AI developments. According to a recent report by The Information, Apple is making substantial daily investments, running into millions of dollars, in the field of artificial intelligence. The company appears to be deeply involved in AI development, with multiple teams dedicated to various AI projects. One team, referred to as the Visual Intelligence Unit, is focused on creating a model for generating images. Additionally, another group is actively researching multimodal AI, which has the capability to recognize and generate images, videos, and text. Insiders involved in these projects have disclosed that Apple's most advanced large language model, LLM, internally named Ajax GPT, has undergone training with more than 200 billion parameters. Remarkably, it is reported to be even more potent than OpenAI's GPT 3.5, which served as the foundation for the initial version of ChatGPT. The next news says artists sign open letters saying generative AI is good, actually. AI will affect artists and others in the coming years, but not as how everyone thinks. Artists wrote an open letter to Congress, claiming that generative AI isn't evil and that the creative community should be involved in regulating and defining the technology. So here's some of the parts of the letter. It says, Pioneering work of individual human artists is being misrepresented. Some say it is about merely typing in prompts or regurgitating existing works. Others deride our methods and our art as based on stealing and data theft. Many individual artists are afraid of backlash if they so much as touch these important new tools. We appreciate the ongoing hearings, insight forums, and other initiatives focused on regulating generative AI systems, and that your goal is to be inclusive, pulling from a range of scientists, advocates, and community leaders who are actively engaged with the field. Ultimately, that must mean including artists like us. So, let's see if the, the creative field will get their desired representations. Now moving on to the next, 
OpenAI introduces Canva plugin to ChatGPT plus subscribers to enhance content creation. OpenAI has teamed up with Canva to make things easier for ChatGPT plus users. Now these users can use Canva's templates to personalize their designs, like logos and banners. To get started, ChatGPT users just need to download and install the Canva plugin from the store. This partnership aims to meet the high demand for quick and user-friendly AI services worldwide. With the new integration, ChatGPT Plus users can simply describe the visual product they want to create. The Canva plugin enables ChatGPT Plus users to create visual products for any social media platforms including Instagram, X, and Facebook, among others. OpenAI has made it possible for ChatGPT plus users to customize Canva's visual products according to their preferences. However, this integration with Canva doesn't include text-to-image generators like Midjourney. Instead, it allows users to work with Canva's extensive collection of ready-made templates. OpenAI is striving to offer ChatGPT users a variety of image generation choices, ensuring they get the most out of their investment. Additionally, there are other competitive AI products on the rise, such as Claude AI, which can read PDFs and Google's Bard. Which of the news items from this week has had the most significant impact on you? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And that concludes our coverage of the week's news. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be the first to receive updates on the latest AI news. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.